Welcome to Crash Courses in Path of Exile. Today we're going to be covering Crafting 101. Now to understand crafting, we have to first understand affixes. Affixes are lines of text that have various properties like plus 50 max life and plus 20 cold res. They give an item additional properties that benefit your character when equipped. These affixes are divided into prefixes and suffixes. This simply means that specific mods either come from the prefix pool of mods or they come from the suffix pool. Items are also limited to only having three suffixes and three prefixes at most, meaning you can only pull three mods from each of the respective pools. You can't have four suffixes on one item, you can only have three. You can't have four prefixes on an item. I listed some examples of common prefixes and suffixes to help familiarize yourself with the idea of suffixes and prefixes. Right now it'll seem somewhat overwhelming, or at least it did for me, but over time you'll begin to learn what are suffixes and what are prefixes and how to tell the difference. I would also recommend enabling advanced mod description so you can hover your mouse over an item and press alt to see whether mods are suffixes or prefixes as well as their tiers. Next we need to understand how affixes work in Path of Exile. Each affix in Path of Exile comes with various tiers. The higher the tier, the higher the number as you can see. A T1 life roll on the body armor gives you 120 more life than the T13 roll which could only give you 3 to 9 life. Each tier has a required item level in order to roll the specific tier of the mod, which means often the best versions of each mod are locked behind high item level items. Items have their item level chosen by the monster level that they were dropped from, so if you kill a level 80 monster, it's going to drop a level 80 item, which means item level 86 items are only dropped by the highest level content in the game. This is important to consider when crafting because you want to be sure to craft on an item that has a high enough item level to get the specific mods you want on the item. For each tier of affix, there is an associated weighting. This is the likelihood the mod will occur. To find the likelihood that a specific mod will occur, you simply have to divide the mod weighting by the sum of all the other possible mod weightings in the suffix or prefix pool. But a general rule of thumb is, if it has a thousand weighting, it's a, it's a pretty average weighting and it's common enough, while 250 or lower is when it starts to become quite rare. Additionally, most affixes have associated types with them, like some are life modifiers, some are defense modifiers, some are physical modifiers. These are important to consider when crafting as it often can be manipulated with something like fossils, meta crafts, or even harvest crafts in the future. Now when it comes to crafting, you got options. I'm going to briefly sum up each method so you have an idea of how these work, but feel free to pause the video and read what I wrote down about each one. To begin with, the chaos slash alchemy scour method. Chaos orbs, essentially they just take an item and they re-roll it with completely new modifiers. This method I only use to really re-roll items when I don't care too much about what mods occur other than I don't want the current mods on the item. Usually I only use this for re-rolling maps because I generally can buy a better item for myself than I could craft with just chaos spamming an item. Next method is alteration crafting. Now alterations are a cheap currency that allow you to continually re-roll magic items for a good prefix or suffix. Alteration crafting is something I use when seeking out a specific suffix or prefix. It's usually a mid-tier step that leads to either an awaken orb craft or an imprint beast craft. It's a middle tier craft where you end up following it up with something else. Next up, essences. Essences are a unique currency which give guaranteed specific mods on use. So it's like a chaos orb that guarantees at least one specific affix will occur when you slam the essence into that rare item. Essence crafting is great for targeting a specific affix you need on an item, as well as rolling exclusive mods that you can only get with an affix. An example being crafting a specific attribute like dexterity on a belt that cannot normally occur as no normally you can only get strength on a belt. Now for one of the most well-rounded crafting methods, fossil crafting. Fossil crafting allows you to limit the mod pool as well as increase the odds of specific mods to occur. Fossil crafting is done by socketing a fossil into a resonator. Resonators can have anywhere from 1 to 4 sockets, allowing you to have 1 to 4 different fossils socketed inside them which greatly change how the craft will go when you slam the resonator onto the item. Fossil crafting is one of my favorites and one of the best crafting methods I would recommend trying out as a new player. It's how I got into crafting myself. I labeled a few of the rare currency items as specialty. I'm not sure if there's a better name for them. Basically, exalts add a random mod, annuls subtract a random mod, and divines reroll the numbers within the range of the tiers of the mods on the item. These are some special currencies and they have some unique properties and you'll end up using them a lot if you get into crafting. Next, I'd like to cover what I'm calling follow-up crafts. These are typically more expensive and are used in combination with previous crafting methods I mentioned. To begin with, there are four special exalted orbs, which can result from each of the four Awakener Guardians. These orbs allow you to add an influence to an item. When I say influence, I am referring to items that have Shaper, Elder, Warlord, Hunter, Conqueror, 
or Redeemer influence. These items will have a special glowy background or color to them, and additionally add special mods into the suffix and prefix pool that could not normally occur on normal items. With these special exalted orbs, we can add influence to a normal base, as well as add a special mod in the process. This allows the user to add influence to a specific T1 base for crafting with the new additional powerful affixes added on when the influence is added. Or you can craft the base prior to slamming it and then slam on a special mod to get an even better item post crafting it. Now for my personal favorite crafting method, Awakener Orb Crafting. This special crafting orb can be dropped from the Awakener himself and it allows the user to combine two items with two different influence types together. But not only that, it guarantees one influence mod from each of the items will be guaranteed to occur on the combination. This is strong because you can take two extremely powerful affixes that are very rare and force them to occur together on the same item. The resulting item will have the two guaranteed mods and will roll randomly for the rest of the mods. This is basically a hit and miss scenario where the resulting item can either be bricked by the bad affixes or turn into something really good if you get lucky. Awakener Orb crafts are among the strongest in the game and result in the best items. It's only held back by the expense of having bad outcomes occur from time to time, which I believe with Harvest Crafts can probably save some of those normal outcomes that would be bad and end up turning them into good outcomes. So. There's a brighter future ahead of us, my friends. Next up, meta crafting. This is all about using special bench crafts in order to guarantee specific outcomes on various currency use. This is extremely expensive, typically, and is best used to finish up very strong crafts. Most notable of these would involve using suffixes can't be changed or prefixes cannot be changed in order to wipe off a set of bad suffixes or prefixes while preserving a good set of prefixes or suffixes. I'm talking triple T1, best of the best. Meta crafting is very expensive and requires a little bit of know-how to get right, so I wouldn't recommend trying it out until you have a much better understanding of crafting itself and have gotten your hands dirty, so to speak, in the crafting world. Now, just like how meta crafting is used on partially complete items to finish them up, Bestiary and Harvest Crafts both have the strength in helping mold items into the crafting process. I listed the main Bestiary Crafts that I use when crafting items, and seeing as how Harvest has not come out yet and we don't really actually have some hands-on experience with it, I will hopefully be making a more complete video explaining Harvest Crafting once I've had time to learn the system in-game. Now I created this crafting decision chart to hopefully give you an idea of what methods I would recommend using when trying to get specific outcomes. I was going to list more specific outcomes to try to go for and, and what ways to do them, but but I quickly ran out of space here, so hopefully what I have here is helpful for you or you get some enjoyment out of reading it. Pause here if you're interested in looking at it. As always, this has been a crash course, and I know I didn't go too in-depth on each topic, but I hope this gives you a baseline of understanding to help you on your quest to learn the crafting system in Path of Exile. As always, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day, friends.